Thank you so much. If you are just tuning in, you're welcome. It is the Pan African debate. We're going to delve straight away with you, uh, Mr. Pasika Farumeli, uh, before actually analyzing the uh, to what extent uh, the bank statement uh, will affect uh, Uganda. Let's understand uh, the, the the aspects of. Uh, the, the 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 gay law in Uganda and also in other African countries uh, before looking at the intervention from uh, this uh, international financial body. Uh, just to clarify, the the gay law in itself is not just an African prerogative or something that we are seeing in African countries. We've been seeing a number of. Uh, countries, whether it's towards the east, which would be Germany and or not Germany, which would be Russia and China, uh, introducing some kind of gay laws. Uh, we've been seeing an approach from parts of uh, of America, specifically the United States of America, where they have uh, been trying to implement some kind of laws that would be uh, controlling. Um, that will be controlling uh, relations between people. So uh, from my point of departure, uh, primarily, I, I, I find it highly problematic to try and control how people can interact with each other, who you decide to date, who you decide to love. It generally makes no sense to me why it's a, it's a problem or something that has to be dealt with by the government. But the way that the, gov the, the, the World Bank has reacted to Uganda's implementation of its law as a sovereign state is quite confusing and quite, uh, quite stressful because what it does is that it says uh, the World Bank is now playing a responsibility where it is able to influence matters of policy and laws within a sovereign uh, state. And on its own, that is very problematic because it will mean that the country itself does not have independence in being able to develop laws that it believes should be able to influence its own population, meaning that the country now needs to be guided by laws that can only be approved or that are approved and are, 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 are guaranteed to be uh, um, uh, excellent on the basis of what the World Bank an independent institute outside of the country uh, believes. And that in its own is very problematic because now it brings into question the ideas of sovereignty and how these uh, countries or specifically how the World Bank decides to interact with other countries that have some kind of law because these laws at the end of the day as I said they are all based on controlling who loves who, who decides to do but with that being said we need to be cognizant of the fact that it is not in itself the World Bank interacting the same way with other countries that implement this outside of the continent of Africa Africa that implement these uh, uh, these laws, these um, uh, anti-LGBTQI uh, laws outside of the continent of Africa, and that is quite quite worrying because what it means is that now we're finding ourselves in a position whereby an independent uh, body can come out and try to control matters of countries that it sees as financially, economically uh, inferior to others. And what it does is that it uses funding which is aimed to help the country itself develop so that it can influence matters of policy and law inside of that country. So with uh, uh, with, with that being said, I do uh, need to emphasize that it is quite problematic when you read the law in itself in detail, but when you look at it from a social political point of view, uh, from an economical point of view, it is quite stressful that a sovereign country cannot implement its own laws because of external influences that uh, threaten to make sure, that threaten to cut off a, 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 a economic uh, support to those countries. But in terms of the law in itself, I do believe that the law in itself does stand towards, uh, 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 um, uh, does line with what I see as somewhat problematic on a point, uh, personal point of view, because I do not believe that government should decide on who can be with who, but from an uh, analytical point of view, it is often problematic when you see that 
black people of the continent of Africa have been humiliated and they've been mistreated for over the years, for several years and decades, but there has not been that international uh, international uh, pressure to make sure that uh, laws that continue to uh, subjugate black people of the African continent uh, are overridden, you know, they are overturned. So that for me is quite problematic that why is it that a specific group of people, which in this context, specifically the LGBTQI community, why is it getting so many privileges ahead of the pro of, 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 of a bigger population of people, which is black people in the continent and outside the continent? Why is it getting so much emphasis? Why is it getting so much the attention uh, at the expense of others, other specific groups? And obviously the, the argument uh, that we can make is that in itself, the group is facing a lot of subject uh, subjectification it's facing a lot of uh, 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 oppression from uh, 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 from from different populations throughout the world but there are people who have been struggling and for some reason they are uh, attention has not been placed on them as much as this uh, um, attention that we see is placed on specifically a subset or a subgroup of people so I, I hope that I make sense Clarice